Combat USA, bringing you MMA, looking state to state for the top eight here on prime time, putting it all on the line for this one chance, for this one moment to stand up and shine. to Combat USA Fighting Championships. I'm your host, Adam Sandoval, and with me today, I have the Gerald Mearshart GM3, uh, one of my favorite fighters out there. How are you doing here today, G Gerald? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. So, a uh, lot of stuff to talk about today. We're going to talk about all the fights that are happening on the state finals. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, Wisconsin state finals, and there are some very impressive fights on the card. Uh, how excited are you for this event? Oh, I'm really excited. You know, anytime you get the, the best of the best at this level uh, to get to fights, the top guys, you know, uh, we have the tournament style fights, so no one can say anything, no ifs, ands, or buts. It's just the cream of the crop and the top dogs out there, so we, uh, we just get to see fireworks all night long. And that's what, exactly what I'm expecting to see April 22nd is some fireworks. Uh, one of the fights I'm very excited about is your fight. Uh, it's you and Whisper Goodman. Mm -hmm. um, how excited are you to have that fight? Very excited, very excited. You know, uh, he's uh, he's had some tough opponents. He's uh, his record's uh, all right, but uh, you know he's got a name because he's fought around a lot, and uh, you know people see him as I think more of a stand-up guy. I think people think he's a, a lot bigger than me, and you know I am moving up a weight class, so a lot of people think the size will make a difference. But I, I feel I have plenty of strength and speed that I can deal with it, and I, I can't wait to show my skills. Right on, man. And, uh, and and the Wisconsin MMA fans, especially, see your skills. Uh, they've been watching you all last year. They've been seeing you already this year. Uh, you never disappoint. You're always impressing. Um, you know, to me, some people might say uh, Whisper is, you know, a big name because he's fought around in different places. But to me, it's uh, it's Whisper who's got something to prove here. I mean, you've uh, you've you've just been winning in dominating fashion. I mean, when's the last time you took a loss? Oh, uh, I don't remember. I know I'm on a seven fight win streak though. Yeah, seven fight so. win streak. I mean, that's that's insane. And it's seven fights. All the way through the tournament last year, fighting some of the best, and now again this year, uh, you know, I think I think it's an impressive thing. All right, Jill, there's lots to talk about you and uh, and Whisper and the other fights, but let's run right into a segment right now, uh, looking at your opponent, which is Whisper Goodman. Uh, let's throw it to Whisper and uh, let's take a look inside of uh, the world of Whisper the Gorilla Goodman. All right. Um, March fifth was tough, but. I'm glad I got the win. I am better than Jeremy Mature because I'm just more rounded, better athletic. I got good um, jiu-jitsu defense. He just ain't ready. Um, I seen him fault. Jerry seen me fault. I have nothing to hide. Just um, jiu-jitsu defense and I'm going to apply my pressure and he got to make a mistake. I got jiu-jitsu de defense. I'm not worrying about him submitting me or nothing like that. So, it is what it is. Well, Jared says I'm overrated, you know. He's entitled to his opinion. But, you know, come um, April 22nd, you know, there'll be three five-minute rounds. And it is what it is. But, you know, he's the defending champ, but there will be a new champ in the building. Um, just because Jared won last year, you know, to me, it's just, a, it's just another fight. You know, it doesn't come with a title. He's the defending champ. He has a label. But there's no pressure. So there you have it. Uh, that's Whisper Goodman. That is your next opponent. And uh, nervous about this fight at all, Gerald? No. Not at all? Not at cool. all. Cool as a cucumber. Yeah. 
as the saying goes, indeed. <laughs> uh, you know, I've, I've fought tough guys before. Uh, I've fought UFC vets. I've fought guys that, you know, have been undefeated. Um, and I've been in the game a while. You know, I know he's uh, a little newer to this than uh, I am, I think. And, uh, you know, if anything, I think that'll play a factor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a good team to work with. You know, some of the best in Wisconsin. And uh, really, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not afraid to fight. He's not going to break my will. It's not going to happen. I will not stop fighting. So uh, if he thinks he's going to come in there and just hit me and I'll fall over like some guys, it's just not going to happen. I'll probably just get angry and hit him even harder. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, your stand-up has, uh, has been impressive. You know, I, I followed you over the last few years and, uh, you know, always been very impressed with your ground game. It seems like all the guys out of your camp have a very impressive ground game. And uh, then I saw you take that, you know, when it really clicked on for me was when I saw you fight Ron Faircloth. Mm. Your timing was there, your footwork was there, your striking was perfect. I was like, oh my God, uh, Gerald's a hell of a striker. Uh, so, you know, I think you're a great striker. Now, is your plan to stand and strike with him? Or are you gonna pull out a submission or what's, what's the game plan? You know, uh, I'm really comfortable wherever the fight goes and wherever he wants to take it. Uh, a lot of people cite that Ron fight as, you know, one of my coming out for my stand-up, but really it's just the tip of the iceberg. I got plenty more tricks up my sleeve than uh, <laughs> just what I showed in that fight. So, sure. I well, mean, uh, like I said, I have the ninja kicks. Those are at my disposal. The ninja kicks are deadly. They, you know, if I need to bust them out, I will. Well. But, uh, I, you know, I got some hands. and that's, That is one big thing. You know, a lot of grapplers and wrestlers, sometimes they have trouble with the stand-up, but... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I, I can box, I can throw kicks, I, I can do it all. Like, if he wants to box, we can box. We can stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I will not turn it down. I'm all for that. Well, I think the fans would definitely like to see that. Um, I think that's what he's saying he wants to do. Uh, it doesn't surprise me a bit to hear you say that, and it wouldn't surprise me a bit to see you do it. But uh, either way, I know you're going to come in there, implement your game plan, and uh, you're going to give it the best you got for the fans, yourself, your team, and... Uh, well, for the cash. Oh, definitely. I, <laughs> I gotta make that money. Come on, I ain't doing this for free. You see this? This is this is too good to just be putting out there for nothing. You know what that's, I'm saying? That's that's exactly gotta, what I was thinking. This this right here makes the money. That's that's, that's the money maker. Is. Yeah, that is the money maker. Well, there you have it. All right, Gerald, let's take this time to uh, cut to a commercial break. Thank all of our sponsors, as always. You know who our biggest sponsor is. Why don't you go ahead and tell everybody? Oh, night at Bingo and Casino. Can't forget it. Everybody knows it. If you watch MMA and you're in the state of Wisconsin, you know that Oneida Bingo and Casino is doing more for the community than anywhere else. And, and you know, like I always say, you got to go gamble. You want to go make that big money, go to Oneida and uh, do your gambling there. If you win, pff, awesome. You know, you're right here in town. You can stop by Combat USA. You can buy a t-shirt. Uh, if you lose, you know what? Some of your money's gonna go back into the MMA community. It's gonna help guys like Gerald. It's gonna help co companies like Combat USA. It's gonna help all the MMA community across Wisconsin, and that is something Oneida Casino does for, does for all of us. Um, also, four ounce fight gear. These guys are making top notch equipment, uh, gear. You know, there's a lot of different companies in the gear game, and uh, four ounce fight gear actually stepped up to the plate and said they liked what we were doing and stood behind us and supplied the gear. So, also four ounce fight gear. But now let's see the commercials. Four ounce fight gear, official sponsor of Combat USA. Developed for the fighters by the fighters. Engineered specifically for today's top MMA fighters. It's not what you want, it's what you need. It's what I need. This is what I need. For more info, check us out at 4OunceFightGear.com. Bringing it 4 ounces at a time. Get You're going to be a great champion. Take him down, take him down, there we go. It's all about fundamental. You take out one to the center. Combat USA Fighting Championship. We are MMA. Wisconsin State Finals, April 22nd, Oneida Casino. 
Welcome back to Combat USA. I'm your host, Adam Sandoval, with Gerald and the Machine Mershart. How you doing, man? I'm good. You excited about those commercials? Were those awesome or what? It was, I, you know, I almost got taken back. It was just so much at once. <laughs> I just... Whew, it's impressive. Beautiful. <laughs> but we do have to thank them. All right, so let's move on. Let's talk about uh, the state finals, man. I mean, this is, this is what we're here to talk about. And uh, we've, got, we've got four different fights. We've got your fight in... Uh, in Whispers Fight, which we've already talked about a little bit, mm -hmm. and working backwards at 170 pounds, we got Tim Halleck and uh, Lenny the Smash Nelson. My opinion, uh, Tim Halleck's uh, an exciting fighter. He's kind of came out of nowhere. He's got a lot to prove yet. Um, he's done a good job so far. We haven't got to see how he works under pressure yet because all his fights have been so short. And if there's anybody to put him under pressure, it's going to be Lenny Smash Nelson. I mean, Lenny is an impressive guy, uh, one of my favorite fighters. And uh, he's strong, he's athletic, and uh, I think he's going to put some pressure on, on Tim. What's your take? Uh, that's very true. Both guys, uh, you know, bigger bigger for 170, definitely. Both going to have, uh, you know, good physical size to him, so I think the strength's going to kind of neutralize each other. Uh, a thing like this, you know, really what it comes down to, I think, is experience. And Lenny does have the experience. You know, they both got power. Both like to throw. It's always going to be exciting when two guys like to come out and stand and bang. But, uh, you know, like I said, Lenny does have a little more of a complete game. Uh, Tim's a little newer. He's more of a stand-up guy. He does have a very good sprawl, and we did see him show some, some jiu-jitsu skills in his last fight. Uh, he choked out Tony Rook, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I saw that guillotine. I will be expecting a little uh, props for that, by the way. <laughs> anyway, uh, but, you know, he had a good hard sprawl. Uh, I still think that uh, Lenny has a little more knowledge, though, if he, uh, you know, uses all of his skills at his disposal, I think he can win. But I think if Tim, for him, the key to win would be to come out and put the pressure on Lenny, put him in an uncomfortable spot, and once he hurts him, do not lay off of him. Uh, you know, it's going to be close either way, but uh, I think Lenny, Lenny's going to take it. Lenny will take it in the end. Mm -hmm. Gerald Mearshart, Lenny says, says Lenny will take it in the end uh, due to just experience is, yeah. is, your, is your claim, basically. Now, do you think Lenny's going to stand with him the whole time, or do you think Lenny's going to be looking for uh, a submission? See, that's a good question. You know, we all got to see Tim sprawl last time, and, uh, you know, he does have a, a pretty decent sprawl, especially mm -hmm. for having a limited wrestling experience. Uh, I think it really depends on how Lenny's feeling on the feet. I know, um, you know, it depends that night if he starts out slow, uh, if he comes out thrown and catches him right away and doesn't have a reason to. You know, that's really one of those things where they could be planning on something, mm -hmm. but until you, you start putting your hands on a guy, you don't really know how they're going to react, and you really want to play off what they do after you initiate your first attack. Game plans can change. Exactly. <laughs> no doubt. Um, yeah, I, I think they're both going to come out throwing to start with, and we'll see what happens after a few land. But I think there's going to be a lot of leather in the beginning of this fight. Should be exciting. Uh, let's move on down the list to 155 pounds. We've got your teammate, Rob Roy, and we've got James Warfield. Uh, my opinion, um, Rob Roy has got the name. He's got the uh, experience in bigger stage fights. I think for him, it's a little bit more of, uh, I've done this song and dance, um, I'm just here to do the thing. Uh, I think James Warfield is an extremely athletic, strong uh, fighter, uh, but I think he is looking to make the name for himself. Um, he's already got a huge name in Wisconsin, no yeah, doubt. Yeah, big, big fan. Uh, you know, the, everybody loves James Warfield, um, but on a national scene, uh, you know, in one of his past interviews, he said, uh, he said, you know, he went to California and... Nobody knew who he was out there. So until he got in there and started sparring guys and, 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 and hitting some guys pretty good, then they started to show him respect. But before that, nobody knew who he was. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the opposite revolt, uh, roles reversed, if, uh, you know, if Rob Roy was to go out to California, I think you know, people would still know who he was. So I think Rob Roy's got a little bit bigger of a name, but uh, I think James Warfield's got, uh, got a lot to prove, and he's been wanting this fight. But then is the anger going to play an issue? I, you know, I don't know. What do you think? Well, uh, it's a really good point, and uh, something I was going to touch on, actually. I do know both of them. I like both guys. I, I think I know, actually, everyone in the upper bracket mm -hmm. at this point. And, uh, you know, we fight on a lot of the same shows. Everyone gets to know each other. And uh, this is, you know, there's a little bit of bad blood there. And uh, uh, if James lets it get to him too much, uh, he could, you know, you know, let your emotions get to you. You can make mistakes. It does happen. Um, you know, James is tough. You know, he's got good hands. He does have definite power. You know, he has a lot of knockouts in his record. Um, and he has been on, you know, some bigger shows, some uh, mm -hmm. decent productions. He's, he's fought tough guys, fought Eves Edwards, a really tough UFC vet, yeah. you know, all around very, uh, very durable and tough fighter. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I think what it comes down to is uh, Rob does have the wrestling. And I know, I'm sure James has been working on it a lot, 
But, uh, you know, Rob's, like, another experience, another case of experience. Mm -hmm. Rob's been in the game a while. He's got real good wrestling. He's very, very fast. And uh, I think a lot of people underestimate his stand-up. He, he, he has some hands. Mm -hmm. He does have some hands. Yeah, you know, I saw some of his, some of his hands, um, you know, nothing in a, in a full MMA fight where he really opened up. But, I, I, you know, I saw some stuff when we were doing that Mantown stuff. And, I mean, yeah, it's against, you know, uh, you know, Joe's, but, you know, technique's technique. You see it or you, or you don't see it, whether they're, you know, implementing it in a full fight or just in practice. And, uh, you know, I was impressed. I was impressed with uh, Rob's stand-up. Uh, do you think he's confident enough in his stand-up to stand up with James, or do you, do you think he's just going to capitalize right away for submission? Oh, I think he's definitely confident enough to stand up with James. Yeah. And, and I think it, it would be interesting, you know, um, you know being his teammate, I don't want to give away his game plan or anything, sure. but... Uh, you know, really, uh, it'll come down to what uh, you know what all happens in the night of the fight. Is he planning on just standing up and boxing with him? Well, on paper, that wouldn't look like a good idea. But you know, mm -hmm. on the same hand, he could, and he always has the takedown at his disposal. Uh, really, how I think this fight's going to go, um, I don't know that it'll take necessarily a long time. But what's going to happen is there might be a you know, it's going to be a little bit of a lull for a little bit. But as soon as someone does something, it's going to go quick, boom. Right. It's going to explode, and something big is going to happen. So you keep got, your eye on this one. <laughs> you got two top-level guys. I mean, these guys have been trying to fight each other for how long? Um, I, I just, I'm excited to be able to have it, uh, to be able to have it in the state finals and, and to see what happens. Um, I, yeah, I'm just excited across the board for that fight. I think probably more excited than I am for, for pretty much any of the fights. That's, that's my main, main fight I can't wait to see. At 145 pounds, we've got Nick Aguilar and Josh Cassie. Uh this is a fight that, uh, you know, I'm sure you're going to have a lot to say about, but let me get my piece out first. I, <laughs> okay. think, uh, I, think, I think Nick Aguilar has the experience, uh, has the strength, uh, the size. Um, really, on paper, any way you look at this, it's Nick Aguilar all day. Uh, Josh Casillo, you got to give him credit. The kid has uh, been working through his ranks. Took 135 pounds last year in, in dominating fashion. Uh, he... Uh, He's been doing good this year at, a, at 145 pounds. He took a tough fight with Chase Beebe. He's got two losses on his record. One's with Chase Beebe. Uh, you know, no, no, no shame in, in losing that fight. Ch Ch Chase is a tough guy. Uh, just mm -hmm. like, you know, this is a win-win for Josh. Even if he doesn't pull off the Nick Aguilar win, the guy's fighting top-level guys. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's awesome for him. But on the other hand, it is a bad thing because he'll have to start back over at local level and work his way back up. A win here would catapult him into a, a whole different division, I think. Um, Nick Aguilar is, is easily one of the biggest names we've got in this whole tournament. And uh, it's, it's an opportunity for Josh, and, and will he be able to capitalize on it? We'll see. Um, I know there's, there's talk back and forth about whether it's going to be ground fight or stand-up fight, which is kind of the talk about every fight. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm interested to hear your take on it. Let me hear what you got. Well, I think as far as Josh is concerned, uh, I don't know that uh, he would have to really rebuild from the bottom up uh, after he loses to Nick. Because, uh, you know, you look, like you said, you look at his record, his two losses, he's got a split decision loss and a loss mm -hmm. to Chase Beebe. Mm -hmm. Now, a loss to Nick Aguilar, you know, three losses isn't that bad, and losses, you know, tough losses like that on anyone's record, you know, isn't, uh, isn't anything to be too upset about. Right. So, you know, it, it'll be a little setback, but you got to remember, you know, he's still young, he's still got time. Very young. Uh, still got, you know, still got plenty of time to build up the record and get some more fights under his belt, and... Uh, you know, as with all the other fights, it seems to be a matter of experience. I think Nick is, uh, at this point in Josh's career, he's just too tough. He's uh, too strong. He's just got too many tools at his disposal. You know, this guy's been fighting for, you know, 11, 12 years. Uh, he's taught me everything I know, and I'm pretty cool, so he's got to know something. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and like you said, we got a real tough camp. We got a lot of top-level guys. And I just think that the, uh, the level of competition is just is still uh, a little different right now. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I wish Josh the best, uh, but I really think Nick's going to take this fight. And, uh, you know, will it be easy? Well, I'd like to think it'd be pretty easy. You know, we'll see. Like you said, everyone has a puncher's chance. Mm -hmm. You know, he might rock him with something or maybe catch him, but uh, I see Nick grabbing a hold of him and pretty much doing whatever he wants. But uh, that also being said... You know, Josh still has a lot of room for improvement. Even if he does take a loss on this one, he's got Absolutely. plenty of time to work back. And uh, either way, uh, and uh, another X factor, you know, him being the hungrier guy, you don't know what he's going to do. Right. You know, this would be an exciting fight just because, you see, he might pull some trick moves out because, yeah. you know, at this point, what have you got to lose? You know, let it all hang out. So that can make this a very exciting fight. Well, and that's just it. You know, at this point, it's it's all or nothing for Josh, and he's, he's going to give 110%. But kind of the same situation for Nick. I mean, Nick's really at that age where it's time 
to uh, make something happen again. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's just it. It'd be again. And uh, you know, winning, jo beating Josh here, and going on to win the whole thing uh, could could do a lot for him. Oh yeah. So you know, uh, Nick's still in shape. He's still. I mean, he's 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 a man, and you know, he's still able to uh, move up to the UFCs and, and the strike forces and things like that. So and still compete. So you know, it's it's a big fight for both guys. Um, I think uh, I think it's going to be an exciting fight. I really do. I think how is how is Nick uh, with his cut to forty five? Uh, you know, he looks like a real big guy, but it, it's not like a overly big deal on him. You know, he it's doesn't not. doesn't kill himself to make weight, uh, and that's a big thing too. You got to be healthy making the weight. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you, if you're killing yourself, cutting you know 10 to 15 pounds, you know the day it weighs and you're dying on the scale, uh, it's going to affect your performance. It's going to your body needs time to recover. You know, he makes 45, uh, and it's not too big of a toll on him. He keeps his strength, his speed, his stamina. You know, so he'll he'll be ready come fight day. Awesome. Speaking of uh, cutting weight, uh, what's the uh, 85 like for you, man? Is this where you're staying? Are you thinking back at seven, uh, 170? What, what's your thought process on it? You know, uh, I think right now for, for this tournament, 85 is fine for me. Um, and, you know, I think once I get to a bigger show, I'll probably cut back down to 170. Uh, sure. You know, I've been getting bigger, but I'm actually, you know, walking around a little lighter. Uh, for my last fight, I didn't even weigh in at 185. And really, uh, you know, I don't care what anyone weighs because if you look at it like this, you know, if I'm going to fight somebody, if someone comes up to me in a parking lot and says we're going to throw it down right now, I'm not going to be like, oh, hey, wait a second. How much do you weigh? Oh, <laughs> uh, you're 200, no, you you're 200 pounds. We can't. I'm sorry, man. No, no. Or no, you're too small for me. No. If, if I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not here to dodge anybody. I'm not really too concerned about weight. You know, if I'm going to beat your ass, I'm going to beat your ass. It doesn't matter how much you weigh. It's going to happen. So, is there anybody else in the state at 170 or 185 that you want to fight? Or have you pretty much gone through everybody in the state? And I, I think I pretty much got it covered. I cleaned <laughs> out 170 pretty thoroughly. And uh, after Whisper, I think I'll pretty much handle 185. Uh, you know, I'm really trying to get on a bigger show after sure. this, so uh, I'm really looking forward to the next couple of fights. Well, I think they're I think they're crazy if they don't take you. I mean, I think you're 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 a, you're a hell of a fighter, man. You're an exciting fighter. Um, I, I I can't wait. I can't wait to see what happens to GM3 over the next three years. Remember that. It's going to be big. He'll forget all about me and Combat USA. Oh, I'll, still, I'll, I'll be around. <sighs> it'll, gonna, it'll be all right. It'll be sad. It'll be <laughs> sad. You let me, you let me like, come to your party and stuff after? Oh, yeah. You get a VIP pass. I get a, VIP, I get a VIP pass? You do. You heard it right it's here. Gonna be I got big. on film. I will have this forever. <laughs> You'll never be able to deny me that now. That's, that's true. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'll get I'll get online and be like, "See what he said? He didn't do it." And I can't I can't be having hate like that either. No, man. No, that's, that's I do this bad. for the, I'm, I do this for the people. What I'm do you think about going back to Vegas? That'll be fun, huh? That'll be very fun. You know, I enjoyed myself the last time out there. It's warm, which is a nice change of setting. You mm -hmm. know, from Wisconsin. Uh, but uh, you know, they got a good training facility. It's always a good time to relax and just you know learn new techniques from different partners, get some different looks. And, uh, you know, that'll be real cool. There's a lot of, you know, guys out there with connections and meet different people and just, you know, get myself to better my overall career. You know, uh, Sean Tompkins and Sam Stout are doing a seminar at the Combat Training Center the day after your fight. Oh, well, I'll yeah. definitely be here for that. And you heard it here first, GM3, Combat Training Center, April 23rd. It's That's going right. down. And we will now go to our second commercial break. When we come back, we will check out the technique of the week. Four Ounce Fight Gear, official sponsor of Combat USA. Developed for the fighters, by the fighters. Engineered specifically for today's top MMA fighters. It's not what you want, it's what you need. It's what I need. This is what I need. For more info, check us out at 4OunceFightGear.com. Bring it four ounces at a time. Enjoy an adventure filled with thrills and fun. Oneida Casino offers guests the excitement of first-class entertainment with non-stop casino action and the luxury of the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. Try your luck at slots and a variety of table games, plus high-stakes bingo, poker, and off-track betting. Visitors to Oneida Casino will never go hungry, no matter what you're in the mood for. Watch the area's best live entertainment free in the Oneida Casino Lounge. Oneida Casino. Fun is our game. Combat USA Fighting Championship. We are MMA.
Wisconsin State Finals, April 22nd, Oneida Casino. Welcome back from the commercial break. We're going to run directly into the technique of the week, which is always a fun part of the show. Uh, this week, we got Ron Faircloth teaching some stuff. So, uh, you know, we teach ground stuff, we teach stand-up stuff. It's great for people who don't know much about mixed martial arts, want to start seeing how all this stuff works. So when they're watching you fight, they know what you're doing. Technique of the week. Ron. I'm Ron Faircloth, head coach at the uh, Combat Training Center. With me is my assistant, Dave Clark. Today in Technique of the Week, we're going to go over the bicep cutter from cross sides. Down. All right. So here, we got our underhook. We're in deep, we're in a good cross side ride, okay? We're going to pinch down and cover this arm. All right, from right here, we like to save with the flavor. Okay, we can get it. What I like to do is now I'm going to flip my feet. Here, this foot above the elbow. Okay, back when the sport was manly before they girled it all up, you had knees, elbows, fists, anything we wanted. Okay, now, like I said, they just fight it a little bit, so now still got the elbows, got the fists. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our hips, we're gonna reach back, grab the hand, let go of my shorts, and we're gonna jam it all the way across our cup, here. Now, I'm gonna come in, figure four my feet, I'm gonna take his head, hook it, I'm gonna pull this way, look it up, and force my feet the other way. And that is a bicep cutter. So there is Ron Faircloth with your technique of the week. How, how well do you know Ron? Uh, I know Ron pretty well, you know, I've, uh, he's been in the fight game for a long time. Uh, you know, we've trained with some of the same guys and even trained together, mm -hmm. you know, we, we fought each other, we, you know, everything short of uh, going on a romantic dinner. So really, yeah. is, is that in the future? Or? Well, I'm not gonna turn him down. I wouldn't either. No, no, he's a handsome man. It really is. It's the ears, man. Gets me every time. <laughs> That's great. One more question for you about Whisper Goodman. Do you think? I mean, everybody that rolls with this guy says he is incredibly strong. Do you think that strength is gonna be an issue for you at all? No. Not at all. Not. And, and why not? Uh, I roll with strong guys too. Uh, you know, I keep telling everyone this. I have not rolled with anyone in my lifetime up, you know, to this point in my life that is as, you know, strong grappling and wrestling wise than uh, Nick Aguilar. That guy is ridiculously strong and, and Rob's right up there and uh, uh, my other coach Hank's right up there too. They're all very, very strong. Um, you know, and I, I think I got the speed and uh, uh, more knowledge on the ground at my disposal anyway. And, I'm pretty diesel myself. You know, I got, I got a little, I got a little something, something down little, there. A little something, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Gerald, uh, that kind of brings us to our show close here. It's been great having you here. A um, few things uh, I want to say. First off, you can, um, you can text 72727, text the word uh, winner, and potentially win a set of tickets to the April 22nd show. That's text to 72727. You're gonna text the word winner and uh, you could potentially get uh, two free tickets to April 22nd. Give it a shot, give it a shot. You'll love it. Um, if not, you'll get free stuff and discounts on stuff and hats and t-shirts and, and all kinds of cool things. You can check us out on Facebook. That's uh, facebook.com slash combatusa. You can check us out online at combatusa.net. You can get uh, fighter profiles from guys like Gerald. You can see their fights, you can see their videos, you can order pay-per-views if you can't catch the fights live. Everything you want is at, uh, is at combatusa.net. Gerald, sponsors. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Combat Corner for sponsoring me, Submission Impossible, all the guys at ACS. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to my coach Hank Aguilar for uh, teaching me the deadly guillotine. <laughs> and uh, you know, guys, come April 22nd, it's going down. ACS is taking home three titles that night. It's gonna be physical and nasty. Physical and nasty, ACS has taken home three titles. You heard it from Gerald Mershart. Uh, what do you got to say to the poor guys that didn't make it into the tournament this year? Uh, you get, on, get on the train next year, man. You know, get, this is good stuff. Get on this as soon as you can. Until then, enjoy watching me, because I know I would. <laughs> He's in everybody's face. If you're not, call us up. We'll see if we can't get you there next year. Uh, that's it for me. Good night. 
Combat USA, bringing you MMA, looking state to state for the top eight here on prime time, putting it all on the line for this one chance, for this one moment to stand up and shine. Congratulations.